Welcome to today's video. Today's video we're going to be exploring how green is an electric car. It's a question that comes up quite a lot for EV owners and today I'm going to be exploring how green it is really to own an electric car. Are you listening? Damn. The first big shocker, electric cars are not green. In fact, no cars are green. If you want to be green, walk. It's the only way of truly being green. Don't have a bike, you need to walk everywhere because that is the only true form of green transport. And if you like honest reviews and honest answers like that about electric cars, then go and click the subscribe button down below and there's a little notification bell next to it. If you click that, you'll be notified every time I make a new video. Now, the first major construction part of an electric car that decides if it's green or not is its bodywork. Now that's exactly the same as a normal petrol car, so we're not gonna compare anything that's the same as a petrol car because they just cancel each other out. We're gonna be deciding if this is greener than a competitive petrol car, not whether electric cars are green, because they are not. They, they produce carbon when they're being built. We're just gonna compare things that are different between this and a petrol car. Now the part that always comes up on forums is how green is the electric battery in an EV. And that's located down here on, on this Renault Zoe. And most electric cars tend to follow the skateboard design, by the way, tend to have the battery down at the bottom of the car because it gives the best weight distribution, it's easiest place to put it. But not all EVs have the skateboard design, but most of them tend to fit them down here. That's why I'm sat on the floor for this weird camera position. Now, unlike the name suggests, a lithium battery isn't actually that much lithium. In fact, of the total mass of the battery, it's only 4%. So it's a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of the total weight of that battery. And that is because it's a cathode. So it's not the main construction of the battery. The battery is made up of many, 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 many other things. But So the, the lithium argument is kind of not really there. It's also not mined, as many people like to make you believe on Facebook memes. So the, this picture was floating around Facebook of a lithium mine, and it's not a lithium mine. It's actually, uh, it's La Excogonda, I can't say it, uh, which is actually a copper mine. So not lithium at all, it's actually copper. And copper goes in, yes, it goes in electric cars, but not in massive amounts. It's contained more in elect consumer electronics, TVs, mobile phones, laptops, PCs, TVs, you name it. There's more copper floating around in them than there is all the electric cars in the world. But that is actually a copper mine, not a lithium mine. So that is a very incorrect fact. So the next question is, where does lithium actually come from? Now, it actually comes from salt brine pools, which is uh, dissolved metals in water, and they extract this basically <laughs> in layman terms, evaporating the water away. And what you're left with is lithium and a couple of other sort of minerals, salts, etc. So that is where lithium actually comes from. It's also a byproduct waste product of oil refinery. Now, on when they basically extract oil, there is waste water. And in that waste water, there is quite a lot of lithium. And some of the oil industry now are, instead of disposing and throwing this water away, they've realized there's some money in it to extract the lithium of it and then sell it to people who make batteries. Not necessarily for electric cars, it could be for mobile phones or other consumer electronics, but that is where lithium comes from. Now, the most important thing to remember about lithium, which everyone likes to forget, it's a metal, which means it can be recycled. So once it's extracted, it's not thrown away and never used again once you, you know, finish using it in your car battery. It can be taken out of the car battery and reused, maybe in another EV battery, maybe in another purpose. But at the end of the day, it's a metal. It doesn't just suddenly stop working. It's, it's just a metal. So they just reuse it and recycle. The other commonly used metal in the battery is cobalt. Now, cobalt is actually only 1% of an EV battery, so a very, very low percentage. Now there is issues with cobalt, but nothing to do with it being green. More to do with other major issues, with one being child labor used to mine it in a lot of third world countries, and the, basically the practice of mining and the, the way it's mined on who mines it, because it's basically mined in little shafts. There's a whole human rights issue, and the biggest players of EV, you know, EV batteries is very little compared to the amount of companies that are building using using basically cobalt for mobile phones and other practices. More cobalt's bought by them than the EV industry. 
and I'm the biggest user of, biggest buyer of cobalt, the biggest is the petrol industry. They use cobalt as a catalyst in fuel to make it low sulfur. So they actually buy more cobalt than any other industry. That is the biggest cobalt buyer is actually the oil industry. So is, is an EV greener than oil? Well, if, they use, if they're buying more cobalt, then that kind of counteracts that one. Oh, quick side note, Tesla are aiming to get that 1% down to zero. Now the next one is a motor. Now this motor here doesn't actually contain any rare earth metals, but certain EV motors do. But being rare earth metals is the key word here, they are recyclable, so they can be reused when the motor has finished its end of life. Back on the floor again, because uh, I need to talk about the brake discs, and I wish I read my entire script first, because then I would have stayed on the floor and just moved rather than moving the camera around to get to the motor. Anyway, brake discs, brake pads, on an EV aren't used as much. Now, if you don't have an EV, you won't understand why, but if you do, you understand what regenerative braking is. Regenerative braking means that instead of you using the brakes, the power is absorbed back into the, by the reverse of the motor, if you like, and that power goes back into recharging the battery. So the resistance of the motor slows down the car, recharges the battery, which means you don't need to use your brake pads and brake discs. Now what this results in is less dust from brake pads and brake discs. Less dust, less PM2s, better for the environment, less changing of brake discs, less changing of brake pads, also means you know less products being made. So yes, again, greener, less manufacturing costs, less manufacturing uses. What if you're only charging your electric car from coal? That is often said to me by people who don't drive electric cars, who just want a, an argument on why an electric car's not green. Ah, well, if you only plug it in when, uh, when we're burning coal, then uh, your EV's not clean, it's dirty. Well, unless you live in a, a very, very, in particular state in America, where they do literally only have one, one or two coal power stations that run the entire grid, if you live pretty much anywhere else in the world, any other state in America, California, Texas, the UK, there is, wind and solar energy that are powering the grid and more and more each day there is more and more wind and solar energy coming on to national grids especially here in the uk now the other thing to remember that a lot of people like to forget is you actually need to use electricity to make fuel so how much electricity do you need to make some fuel? Well, I have some handy little figures written down here that I need to look away for. <laughs> to run, to basically make one UK gallon of fuel, that's 4.54 litres for our American friends, it takes 7.5 kilowatt hours of electricity, which could power an EV, family typical sized EV, for about 30 miles. So before you've even made the pet, before you've put the petrol in a forecourt, delivered it to the petrol station, powered the forecourt up, put it in the car, before you've burnt that fuel, you've already used 7.5 kilowatts of electricity, which could have already traveled an EV 30 miles. Now, if you also burnt that fuel in an EV, you could then get some more added power out of it. But we're not gonna burn, we don't burn things. We don't like burning things to be green. Burning things is not green. So we don't, instead of basically putting 7.5 kilowatts into making a gallon of fuel, you might as well put 7.5 kilowatts in something like this, which will take you 30 miles. And you haven't burned anything if you've used wind or solar off the grid. And if you are not on a 100% green energy tariff and you own an EV like me, and you want to be on a 100% energy green tariff like me, there's a link down below for Octopus Energy. Octopus are a 100% green energy supplier. And there will be an added video of, a, of this two-part series about how green is your electricity supplier. And just to let you know, I've checked Octopus out and they are very, very green. And if you switch them, 50 pound credit for you, like I mentioned, and cheap electricity at night from 5p per kilowatt hour when it's all running that lovely wind energy. Just before I go completely off topic, it's very important that I tell you why I know there is more wind going in on the UK. Now, coal in the UK, coal power plants are subsidized by the government to run. Wind used to be when it was not 
economical to install wind. So the government used to give grant for wind and install it, and they'd still give grant for nuclear power plants, as people know about Hinkley Point C or whatever it's called now. But in the UK, wind is no longer subsidised, yet there is companies still installing wind plants in the sea and in the UK. And the reason for this is it makes them money. Wind is the cheapest form of energy generation possible. That is why there is more and more wind being installed because it makes companies, energy companies lots of money. And that is what they want. They want to make money. So make sure you check out Octopus Energy and also the video I've got coming about how some energy companies are greenwashing us. So if you click the subscribe, you won't miss that video that's coming in a few weeks. The next thing that decides how sustainable and how things are gonna last and how green they are is basically how many times you need to replace them and fix things on them. Because the more manufacturing we do, the more plastic waste we get, the more issues we get. Now, the biggest thing with EVs is there is practically no servicing of them. There's no oil services. So there's no oil filters, there's no fuel filters. All these little bits like timing chains, they all have to be manufactured and made. And most of them arrive wrapped in plastic and the old ones get thrown away. And they try to recycle what they can out of it, but it's not green, it's constant trucks being delivering parts, fitting these parts, taking these parts away. There's a lot of plastic, there's a lot of waste, there's a lot of rubbish that's created from them. And you don't need any of it with an EV. There's no oil, there's no timing chain, there's no timing belts, there's no, all these moving parts that go wrong, engine replacements, exhaust replacements. And we haven't even got into the entire issue of how EVs don't burn anything like fuel. But all these little additional things add up on what makes an EV greener than a petrol car. And EVs are the most, the most important thing about an EV is the longer it's on the road, the greener it gets. Now, if you really want to be green, if you've got an old, old petrol car, then take the engine out, recycle the bits in it and put an electric powertrain in. That is the greenest thing because the carbon is embodied into the body and you've re redone that car. But most people won't do that. If you're thinking of buying a new car and you can't decide if it's gonna be a petrol car or an EV, buy an EV. It's the greenest choice you can make from day one. If you don't need a car and you're quite happy with the car you've got, then think about converting it people some people do conversions on cars now at the moment it's not practically cost effective but if, if you are only caring about being green that is the greenest thing you can do now logically is it greener to own an EV or own a petrol car it's greener to own an EV they get greener the more and more you use them as the grid gets greener and the longer they last and they do last longer they are more reliable and that is the most important thing. That's the most important lesson that you can learn today on my channel. Thank you very much for watching this week's video. Please don't forget to click subscribe. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and let Google know that you enjoyed it. And I'll see you again next week. Thank you very much and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.